Hi, I'm Sarah Dosa, the director of Fire of Love and other things. Um, I am so thrilled to, to be here. I feel like I've stepped into a portal. This is La Jete and Sans Soleil, which Sans Soleil is my favorite film of all time. It's taught me so much about uh, writing in film and about imagery and collage and the themes of, of time and longing and loss and space. Uh, yeah, will forever be imprinted onto my mind and onto my heart. Um, and this is what really introduced me to Criterion in the first place. So the fact that I'm getting to pull this off of this wall and put it into this bag in this place, uh, that, that, that makes, makes me very happy. I'm, I'm having a little moment here. <laughs> Burden of Dreams, absolutely incredible. Love Les Blank, love Werner Herzog, uh, a film about madness, desire, nature, filmmaking process, all, all the good things it's going in here. Uh, Faya Dei is a gorgeous film. I've only seen it once, but it really affected me deeply. Um, such a poetic film. Um, and uh, Jessica Bashir, the, the filmmaker, I really admire her. Um, I've seen her give a lot of talks on the film, and so this is one that uh, I look forward to seeing again. Jules and Jim um, by Tr Francois Truffaut. I first saw this in college. Uh, and it blew my mind. Um, the narration was unlike anything I ever heard. And I loved the, the love triangle at the, at the heart of the film, which now very much um, inspired, actually, the love triangle of Fire of Love, my, my last film that I just made. But in Jewels and Gem, there's a running scene where the three main characters run across a bridge. They, they race each other. And in that scene, there's such exhilaration and such heart and the sense of energy. I remember when I saw that, I thought like, any film I ever make, there will be a running scene because of Jules and Jim. And I've never had a running scene in any film I've ever made. Um, so, I have to do that. Eat to Mama Tambien. Um, this way. I'm obsessed with this film. I watched this film over and over and over. The first time I watched it, it just kind of washed over me. And I knew there was tremendous depth there. And I needed to watch it again to really unpack it. Um, but the story, again, a, a love triangle at its heart, um, I just find so exquisite. There's moments that I feel like are like these marbles, these little worlds that I want to dwell in. There's a scene when one of the characters is, is swimming in a, in a swimming pool with, that's like scattered with leaves. And, and there's a shot up, um, you know, with the light kind of pulsating through. And there's so much communicated um, and the writing uh, was gorgeous. Um, it, when we were making Fire of Love, this was a film that we really studied um, to try to learn the narration uh, as much as possible. Our narration was very different, but we loved how it would prompt and, and call attention to details uh, that um, the camera wasn't focusing on. It was off to the margins in a way that taught so much about kind of an ecological view of, of this um, socio-political world that was spiraling around the, these hyper-immature main characters. But I, I could go on and on and on, but love, love, love. Ichimama Tambien. Me and everyone we know. I had the profound honor and joy of working with Miranda July on the narration for Fire of Love. And that all started back with seeing me you, and everyone we know in 2006. Um, I remember I ordered a DVD and a little red envelope from Netflix back in the day when, when we did that. Um, and I watched it and was just, I hadn't seen anything like it before. I feel like Miranda crafted such like a, a new cinematic language and a way for exploring relationships that pulled together like the intimate and the strange with the like utterly familiar all at once. Um, yeah, there's a transcend. I think with all these films, there's like I think there's like an exhilaration and a f and a transcendence that courses through all of them. And for me, that like speaks to kind of um, the meaning of, of um, and my greatest hopes for cinema. So this is very near and very dear. <laughs> the bar is set. Um, <clears throat> She is my grand high priestess. Um, I just absolutely love the way Agnes Varda sees the world and tells stories. I feel like she has such a singular voice that at once is constantly innovating and building upon new ways of, of filmmaking and seeing the world. I'll probably stop there because I could go on and on. But I feel so lucky to, to really be in this little closet.